The gunshots are alarmingly realistic, but this is no battlefield. In fact, it's just an ordinary day for the International Committee of the Red Cross near the peaceful Swiss city of Geneva. It's holding a session to train new aid workers to cope in dangerous situations. The simulation that we went through on the ground was really realistic. It was really well thought out to simulate situations we might encounter, either when we meet people in need of aid, especially the displaced, or when we're at a checkpoint. With military checkpoints and bombed out hospitals, the fictitious country of Alpesia aims to be an ultra-realistic simulation of life in the field. Once the role plays over, groups are debriefed on their mistakes. What they did not say uh, was that it's actually a security risk to take somebody on board who's armed because uh, the reputation we build uh, with all authorities and weapon uh, bearers is that we are neutral, impartial. And obviously if you go down this road and you have somebody from the Apesian Armed Forces in the vehicle, it's a target. It's a legitimate military target for the opposition. Exercises such as this are increasingly common as aid workers risk becoming targets themselves in conflict zones. The environments where we work is increasingly becoming insecure and staff have to be prepared for the worst, uh, be it uh, uh, shooting incidents, uh, physical assault, uh, kidnapping. Uh, they have to be ready and they have to be aware. The Syrian conflict has already cost the lives of 20 workers from the Red Crescent. And in 2011, more than 300 aid workers were killed, kidnapped or injured around the world. Nonetheless, according to the United Nations, there are about 10 times more aid workers in the field today than a decade ago.